Good morning, everybody. Welcome here to the Prog Monster. This is a channel that is dedicated to progressive rock, heavy metal, hard rock, and other forms of rock music. My name is Murph, and I am the host of this channel. So we're mid-month now. Well, pretty close. We're on the 12th. So normally mid-month, I do an episode called Playlist. So at the end of each month I do new albums purchased and the middle of the month I do this show called Playlist. Playlist is essentially I talk about um, the albums that are currently in my playlist, things involving in that. So I don't do a al I don't do a song playlist. I know a lot of people have these playlists that they have on their phone or they have in their car or whatever. I'm I'm not a song person that way. I like the full effect of the albums. Most albums at least the ones I like anyways are produced in a manner that to in fully enjoy the music on them it's usually best to listen to them as an album and so that's that's how I've grown to listen to my music I like doing it that way that's why I have physical copies of CDs as opposed to just having download a bunch of um, songs that I like um, you know that's okay if you just want to listen to the same songs over and over again. I'm not interested in that at all. It doesn't interest me. In fact, it kind of turns me off. Mm. However, I have listened to the radio recently and because I'm uh, basically driving a lot when I'm working. So I, um, they have a multitude of channels on there from the Sirius XM and and so I've been listening to stuff, but already after only a week of kind of semi-listening to it, I'm already uh, getting songs that I've heard three or four times during the week. So I'm already lost it again, and I'm back to not listening again already. It doesn't take much to kind of turn me off, and that kind of thing does turn me off. So anyways, on the playlist, what we do is I talk about what's going on with my playlist, um, what what's recently come off my playlist what's recently go on my playlist and um, at the end I usually give you a five favorite albums from the playlist which really when you think about it are my five favorite albums right now they're the ones I'm listening to the most and they're currently the ones in the top spot it's almost like having a um, an album chart you know it's kind of like that in some ways so anyways um and then I will also talk about what what I've been listening to over the course of the month as well. So without further ado, we're going to get to it. So the four albums that have come, four albums have come off my playlist since last month's issue of Playlist. Um, and they are Jethro Tull's, um, sorry, Stormwatch. Sorry, drawing a blank there for a second. So this album came off, it was on there about... God, it got to be 10 months, at least 10 months. I think it was about 10 months. Could have been a little bit longer, maybe 10 and a half months. Um, definitely a super album. It, very difficult. Few albums have gotten that that far in, uh, with me on the playlist. Uh, I only had two that have come, uh, uh, been on there longer than a year. One of them is uh, Gentle Giants Acquiring the Taste. The other one is Jethro Tull's Songs from the Wood. The one... Songs from the Wood one was back in 2006, so not really uh, something that's happened recently. Um, this one, Uriah Heep, Chaos in Color, both the same amount of time as the Stormwatch album. Uh, they were actually, I think, put on the, if I looked back, uh, I was able to look back, I would see that they were both put in the playlist at roughly the same week, if not the same week. Uh, really like this a lot. This is probably my favorite Uriah Heep album. Just so good. And being a new album from this year is even better. Or not this year, but last year. So those two have been, were the first two to come off. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze, I think. <coughs> I do apologize. I don't know where that came from. Anyways, those are the first two that have come off the uh, off the list. Now, the next one that came off was uh, a couple weeks later, I think. This one, Jethro Tull's Heavy Horses. A really good album. If not for the other two Jethro Tull's on this playlist, it would probably easily be the number one album. It never, I don't think it ever made it to the top spot. That's because 
the three albums that I, the other three albums I took off were in that spot the whole time and very difficult to beat them out. It's a solid, solid album though. Likely it will be a masterpiece at some point in the future. Um, it's just a matter of uh, time now, I guess. So Jethro Tull's Heavy Horses. The and that one was maybe uh, I think that one was about maybe seven and a half, eight months on the, so pretty lengthy time. And then the last one, of course, came off this morning when I did the list. Uh, when I made my new one, added a new one, and took this one off. This is uh, Jethro Tull's Broadsword and the Beast. Excellent album. Pretty close to as good as those first two, uh, Chaos and Order and uh, Chaos and Color and um, Jethro Tull's Stormwatch. This one, I think, is just a tiny bit. You know, and, and in time, this may end up being the bigger of the three albums, but right now it's just a tiny hair bit, not quite as good, but in almost the same amount of time, if not the same amount of time on my playlist. So those are the four that came out. Now I'll give you the four new ones that I added to the list. So this one first, Zuma by Neil Young. I've got a bunch of Neil Youngs that I have to get to, but this was the one I've had the longest, so I gave in. It was on the waiting list the longest of them so anyways I, if I've listened to it its entirety now I think I've gone it's gone through my playlist a couple of times it's doing okay maybe not quite as good as I thought it might do but it's still doing very good next one up is uh, this one Camel's Nude have to say this one's been a bit disappointing even though I did listen to it a couple times obviously when I first got it and then a couple times before I put it on the playlist and now it's had it a couple times too I don't know, I find it a little bit more poppy than I thought it was going to be. It hasn't really taken off with me yet, so we'll give it some time. I usually give the um, progressive albums longer time because they take longer for me to like them, generally speaking. Next up is this one, Chicago. I think Chicago 2. Lots of good stuff on here. Um, this is a band I've been trying to get into. I don't know that I'm into them yet. Um, I, I definitely got like this album. I've listened to their um, first seven or eight albums uh, during one of my playlist type thing when I was li my listening events, I call them. So, but this one I like. So it's on my playlist. It's only been on there a short period, so can't really say too much about it. And then this one I just put on today, "A Hard Day's Night" by the Beatles. Um, I have no doubt this will do fairly well. I like almost everything the Beatles do, the new and the old era, or the um, pop era and the psychedelic era, if you prefer. But this one, a good album, lots of good stuff on here. I'll be listening to this. It'll be in my playlist for a while. Generally speaking, I tried to give all the albums in my playlist about 10 weeks or so. Um, then I start considering if they're not really taking off, I pull them unless they're progressive, and then I tend to give them a few more weeks to kind of get some kind of uh, footing for them. But anyways, that's, those are the four new ones. So, and now, talk a little bit about my listening habits. So I've been listening to, um, so my listening habit for this week is going to be the Emerson, Lake, and Palmer uh, collection that I have, and I will probably go online to listen to the ones I don't have. As I'm trying to now get myself motivated to get into this band, which seems like a no-brainer for somebody like me to be into, but for some reason I never have taken off other than Lucky Man, which I love. The rest of their collection I haven't really got into, but I think owning the Green Slade collection and then a recent video I watched uh, on the debut album of Emerson, Lake & Palmer's kind of motivated me to go this direction. So I think this week it'll be the Emerson, Lake & Palmer collection that I'll be listening to in my spare time if that ever happens. But that's generally how I do it. So my um, so I've been listening also to uh, the albums that, obviously the ones I did for ranking the albums, I did those four as well. Um, and uh, a couple of other albums that I did uh, reviews for on the... Um, look back at a classic rock album and what's new and I'll probably uh, continue with that habit so usually if you think about it I I try to get about three albums a day which doesn't really seem like that much but when you think about the time span it's usually somewhere between two and a half and three hours which takes up a lot of time when you're busy and you're working uh, weekends maybe more I've usually try to get five or six during a day on the weekends 
like this morning I've already gone through two albums and probably when I'm doing the dishes and cleaning up before I go out I'll probably listen to another one so I might get in four or five today or maybe six. Oh, plus I gotta do the what's new album for later so it'll be probably five or six today that's pretty normal standard for the weekends um, I can't listen to music around the clock because I I don't do it at all at work because you can't really there's no opportunity there for that and then uh, yeah so that's basically what's been going on with the listening so and I'll give you my now I'll give you my five favorite albums from the playlist this week I don't know why I say from the playlist they're just my five favorite albums because at this point in time because if they were an album that was my favorite that wasn't on the playlist they would be on the playlist okay so next the first one oops, sorry came loose here wasn't secured 100% is this this one this is uh, the Chronicles of Father Robbins this is the book three I don't have book two I've been looking for it but I have book one and two so book one came out of the play uh, out of my top five and was replaced by this one which is book three which is magic magical chronicles I believe is the title of it I don't have my glasses on but I think that's what this this is quite good I think I like I think ultimately I will like this more than the other one than the first one hard to say that one has been in the playlist for seven or eight months now and has done very well have reached the number one favorite album for the month <coughs> a few times now so this one I think it's got a good shot to make that as well uh, the fourth my fourth favorite album is from these guys Eloy you can see that up close. This is the Silent Cries of Mighty Echoes. That's why I'm getting a bit of a glare. So maybe look over here. That doesn't seem to. Oh, that's better. <coughs> Take a drink here while I'm at it. So I've really grown to like this. This is the like the first Eloy album I owned or was listening to and had been in my playlist was Colors, and I like that a lot. This one, this one kind of is not really similar, but has it's having that same effect. Maybe more of an effect. I find this to be heavy, very Floydish. Lots of Floyd sound here, but a heavier Floyd. And the, the reason I like that is because I'm picturing Animals, and Animals is my favorite Floyd album because it's the heaviest of them. And this one is right in there with it. It's very, very good. I think this will end up being my favorite. So it makes perfect sense that I like it the most, mostly because it's very Floydish. Next up. This uh, was number one for a while. I think I had it at number one when I did the show last week, month. And uh, it's continued up until today when it fell out of favor. Not, And it's not that it's fallen, it's just the other two albums have moved ahead of it. So this is my third favorite album, Judas Priest's uh, most recent album called Infinity, or uh, sorry, Invinci Invincible Shield. Um, this is really good. A lot of strong stuff on here. Among my, f already among my favorite Judas Priest albums, I think they are doing as good as they've ever done. I can't believe how good Rob Halford. Sorry, I've got to fly here again. I can't believe how um, good Rob Halford sounds on this album. You know, he's over seventy and he still can just hammer it out. I I wish I could sound that. I hope I sound that good when I'm. Uh, I hope I sound that good ever. Really, to be honest. So the number two album for the week, I'm just herring out that album. They, they'll probably, I have a feeling these two albums are going to bounce back and forth between each other. There's no prayer for the dying. This has really come up and grown on me a lot over the last month or two. Uh, especially this month, it's moved up to second. Could go, could go to first, could go to first. Sometimes, you know, you get an album that, you normally would think will make it to first, but for whatever reason, it's blocked by something that's just doing better. You know, it's just one of those um, kind of like when the Islanders were winning all those cups back in the early 80s for, in the International Hockey League. And they were still a great team, but Edmonton just became a better team. That's all it was, you know. Anyways, No Prayer for the Dying from Iron Maiden. Fantastic album. I love it. And then number one, and I'll be honest, I did not see this coming because uh, after about two and a half months on my um, playlist, I wasn't even sure I liked it. And then all of a sudden I started liking one song. Now I like the whole thing. Obviously it didn't make it to this spot for no reason. 
and it's just it's just continued to get stronger i just i find myself wanting to take it out of the playlist and just play it all the time right and it's in the land of gray and pink it's not something i expected to happen i actually thought this band would not end up being a band that i liked a lot but now i'm now thinking about some of their other albums that i have kind of dismissed a couple months ago when i was doing stuff on them i kind of dismissed them saying i don't think i want to go there but now I'm, I'm wondering if maybe that was a rash decision, and this because this is this is currently number one, and and it's there had beat out two really strong albums to be there, so I, I think it's deserving. So I'll just give them to you again. So we got Caravans in the City of, uh, sorry, in the Land of Gray and Pink. Sorry, I drew a blank there. Number one, number two, No Prayer for the Dying from Iron Maiden. Number three, Invincible Shield from Judas Priest. Number four, Silent Cries and Mighty Echoes from Eloy. And last but not least, The Chronicles of Father Robin. And the book three album is called Magical Chronicles. This is the third book for that group in the fifth place today. So there you have it. Those are... That's my playlist for the uh, month of, uh, I guess this is October, middle of the month, October. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. Don't forget to put in your um, comments about the album. If you want to put what you're doing for your playlist, that's great too, because sometimes I get ideas from that. Not so much to change my playlist, but sometimes I get ideas for shows, which... If you've got those things in your playlist, you're probably going to like the show too. So anyways, I hope to see you all throughout the week um, or next week, and we'll see you then. Take care and goodbye.